can see it yes there it says recording yep we're on <laughs> hi amy in orlando how are you hello i'm good nancy in virginia <laughs> how are you <laughs> should add official titles that's lady nancy of virginia that's right yeah lady of virginia <laughs> lady amy of orlando yes <laughs> see, you, you get a city i get a whole state <laughs> that's true yeah well i'll be lady of florida i don't care i'll take the whole state <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me on this yeah. one. Um, it has been a curiosity of mine when I peruse the internet and I see the different flavor teas out there and I see Earl Grey and then I see Earl Grey Lavender and Earl Grey Bravo and Earl Grey this and Earl Grey that. And I thought, what's the difference? So I thought, who better to sample this and test and taste this with than Lady Amy of Orlando? <laughs> and get your expert tongue on this as well as mine. Thank you. Yeah. I yeah. have some hot water ready. I know you do as well, but I wanted to smell these. I knew we were doing this a little off camera before, but so the first thing I'm going to do, I've got my Bravo here. Okay. Yeah, I was going to go in order. So yeah, so here's yeah. Bravo. And your Bravo. And in looking at it too, where mm -hmm. regular Earl Grey definitely has the bergamot oils that we, we know of, but when you right. get, say, for example, a Twinings blend, you just mm -hmm. see black tea leaves. And it's typically a Salem tea that has been flavored but this has extra orange chunks in it. Okay, is that, that's what I can smell, yeah. And I think this has a stronger orange flavor, so I'm anxious to see how that, we probably should have done four or five different Earl Grey. We could have <laughs> Earl Grey, Lady Earl Grey. The oh, you're right. <laughs> um, and then Sorry, have, they'll be around too. <laughs> okay, that's right. Okay, so Moonlight. Okay. Smells heavenly. Yeah, so I really am excited to taste this one. Yes, I this definitely one. smell sweeter notes in there. Mm -hmm. um, and if I look at it, there are pretty blue corn flowers in there. Oh, really? And That's I do cool. see, if you see the little tan, uh, the tan leaves, those are also, those are the vanillas, if I'm not mistaken. Those are going to be your vanilla notes. Yeah. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. I love those little blue flowers. They're mm -hmm. so, I think they're so feminine. I don't know why I think that looks like a Victorian tea, as if I ever, you know, I was in a past life, in a past life when I, you know, had tea with Queen Victoria. That's Same what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> and then number three. Okay. Earl Grey cream. cream. It smells a lot like the moonlight, but there's something, like, there's a yeah, little. Yeah, it's not as sweet. Right? Is the, exactly. Yeah, is it the vanilla that's off? There's a, exactly, there's a creamier, I do think there's think a creamier right. quality to it. Yeah, what is, do you know what the, what makes it the creamy smell? It's supposed to be vanilla. It's oh, okay. Vanilla. So maybe there is a variation of how much vanilla right. there is between the moonlight and the cream. All right, is, I'm going to add my hot water. Because do you see the vanilla pieces in your Earl Grey cream, like you did oh, the moonlight? Good. Let me see. I might have to put my glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't. The only thing I have ever seen mm -hmm. in um, Creme de la Earl Grey, as it's also known, is, uh, is a pretty blue flower. So now that you mention it, no. So maybe it isn't as strong. Now I'm really anxious to try. I have kept Creme de la Earl Grey yeah. in my pantry as a staple for four years. It was the first tea I had tried out of the Twinings variety box. And uh, oh my, my goodness, brought it for me. And uh, but now that you mentioned, the only thing I've ever really noticed was the blue flowers. I don't think it has the tan flowers in it from the vanilla. So it should be interesting. Awesome. Okay. And ahead. that's really interesting because I don't think I've like hardly ever drank Earl Grey cream tea. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Like, what is it? Okay. It's called. It's also known as the tea for aristocracy. Ooh. Well, it's that sounds so good. Elegant. So for everyone who sees my ugly water kettle, it's so that I can show an, what an electric kettle is to the Americans. Well, okay. <laughs> I like to take every opportunity. <laughs> I, I took mine from my electric kettle and put it in my royal hour. Put it in your pretty, yeah, put it in your pretty pot. <laughs> so that's good. We're representing both. <laughs> yeah. And my, it always pleases my husband to know that I'm actually using the things that he buys me. So. Oh, that's, that's great. <laughs> All right. So we have tea going. And while that steeps for the two, three minutes that it is supposed to, how you doing? <laughs> I'm good. It's been a 
a busy day. As I told you uh, off camera, I had, a, um, believe it or not, an emergency tea order <laughs> that someone needed shipped overnight. <laughs> so I got that out and said I took it to FedEx. What <laughs> constitutes a tea emergency? Um, well, it was for one of the business people that I do like client gifts for. And it's someone that I guess, I think they may be signed up at the end of last week, but it wasn't all ready to go until like this morning wow. uh, for her to hand off the information to me. She's like, can you please <laughs> send it? <laughs> and I could, so it was fine. <laughs> Goodness. Yes. I like having a tea emergency. <laughs> there are worse emergencies to have. Yes. Yeah. Especially in this age of pandemic. Right, right. Yes. I liked, um, yeah, telling the FedEx guy when it's just a small envelope and he's like, what is it? And I was like, it needs to be overnight. <laughs> he's like, what is it? He goes, it's tea. <laughs> he didn't question. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yes. But so how is your day going so far? The day is fine. The day is fine. We had, um, on Mondays we have short as, as you know, and for those of you who get Amy's, um, uh, blog, I'm sorry, the tea times. Oh, yes, yes, the little e yeah. newsletter. You know, be mindful of those out there, those moms and dads who are doing the homeschooling, and I am one of those moms, and yes. uh, not an easy process. Definitely miss school and wish we were back into it already. Um, mm -hmm. Understand the caution, but um, so on Mondays, we just have three hours, um, nine to 12, and whatever they don't finish, they, they don't finish, and they say that's oh. it, because they don't want to force homework. They already know that we're spending far too much far, uh, time on the screen, so. Yeah, that's good. I didn't know, yeah, that's really smart. So, but otherwise, then I have to show you real quick, so and those of you who might follow me on Instagram, I made English muffins this weekend. I oh my goodness, look at you. you <laughs> that's awesome. They're not as healthy as the Thomas brand, but you know, but I made them, I tried <laughs> and I did it. Hey! Good job. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And if you don't follow her on Instagram, you should follow her on Instagram. Yes, <laughs> yes you should. <laughs> you hear that, Mom? I love that. <laughs> I, was like, I just got my mom onto Facebook, so there's no, <laughs> we're not messing with Instagram yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big enough step. That's a big enough step. My mother won't touch Facebook. She won't, she won't do any of that. She, really? She's just recently become an expert texter to the point that now when I email her, she texts me and she says, I got the email you sent me last week. You got to text me if you're going to email me because I don't check it anymore. Now I just do this. That's so funny. <laughs> I'm like, you everybody. <laughs> All right. I'm looking. Do you see any color difference? Yes. Well, yeah, I say, okay. Um, I feel like uh, number two and three so the moonlight and the cream both have like a lighter reddish tint to it right bravo's darker is that what you got uh no but i wonder if that's <laughs> we didn't apportion the tea leaves correctly um, oh that's all right <laughs> why what are you do yours look different yeah actually my cream looks lighter but i noticed too when i was um uh steeping them i'm like i didn't put as many tea leaves in that one i should have measured and been more accurate with my with my measuring and I didn't do that. So, oh. Right. Like it was oh, well, they're good enough. They look good. Yeah. <laughs> and I say, and like the lighting's hitting mine differently. So who knows? <laughs> All right. Get that. So you know, it's the uh, seventh Earl of Twinings. My friend met, I have a friend here, if, if you, Catch for anybody who caught me last week on tea time, afternoon tea with me, um, my friend Linda, she's a frequent traveler to London. She's a big Anglophile. We fight over who's the bigger Anglo Anglophile. Um, <laughs> but she was at Epcot. And oh, yeah. And the Earl of Twinings was there. It was a couple years ago. So she actually met him. Oh, my goodness. Yes. And I had his book, and he said that you should never add sugar to your tea. It dampens the palate. And I'm thinking... I don't know one tea from another without sugar. <laughs> That's true. I say I can taste I I can taste a difference, but I don't enjoy it as much <laughs> if it's not sweetened. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. I, I I caught your um uh afternoon tea, your your tea with um your British friend. And you oh. got 
her. Do you mean, which one? I don't remember. It was late at night for her. It was like three in the afternoon for you. Oh, yes. Uh, Jane. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And you asked yeah. if she missed the sugar. She said every day of my life. But she, said, yeah, she hasn't been doing it. I guess what, for 10 years? I'm like, oh, the will. I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. So, all right. Well, it's probably going to burn my tongue. We don't want that. Right. And I do want to show off because since you sent me, so first of all, Nancy sent me all these cool teas and like a really pretty, pretty box. And then got these cool uh, organic sugar rocks to go. <laughs> and they, so see, they're not little, they're not quite cubed. They're almost cubed. <laughs> but they're rocks. Small formed, aren't they? Yeah. They're so cute. <laughs> all right. You tell me when you're, when we're going. <laughs> you want. I just don't want either one of us to burn our tongue. Oh, okay. Well, let's see. Smells good. Mm -hmm. I would say that's definitely more orangey than a regular Earl Grey. Yeah, I feel like it's, um, it like comes in at the end. Do you notice that? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, it's definitely stronger on the citrus because I I'm not I've never been a huge fan of Earl Grey. Mm -hmm. We drink on a regular basis. <laughs> mm, it's very strong. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's yeah, good. it is. Yeah, I would say it's like a bolder tea mm. or a bolder Earl Grey. That is really good. Mm -hmm. mm, I think I may find another one for my pantry. <laughs> Every time an Amazon box shows up, or any box, my husband's like, FedEx is here again. Did you get more tea? No, honey, I'm <laughs> something else this time. <laughs> okay. Hope he doesn't watch. All right, should we go to number two? Sure, so next one is the Moonlight. Moonlight. Okay. Right. Now, I have one that already knows what creme de la Earl Grey tastes like, so I'm curious about this. Okay. Mm. It's really good, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like before I even finished swallowing it. <laughs> it's like, that's great. Wow. Well, you taste definitely more vanilla notes in this. Yes. In the Bravo. Mm hmm And I have to say, I know Twinings offers an Earl Grey Lavender. Yes. It's not as good as this, but again, a bagged tea versus a loose leaf tea. Right. Also, that's going true. To the but this is great. Yeah. When I used to work an office job, I had uh, Twinings Earl Grey Lavender and Earl Grey with Jasmine. They were two different ones. Yeah. Yeah. I'd go back and forth off. So they're good enough for drinking at the office. <laughs> I said, yeah, my friend Linda, the one I mentioned before, she's a big Bigelow fan. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Twinings is the oldest tea marketed tea in the world right and um have, i don't know if you've been did you go to the twinings tea shop the time no i haven't been i need to but no i haven't been but i know yeah they're like the the original <laughs> it's a little building that has two little chinamen um, yeah. up on the top there and um yeah. my last day in london um I went off on my own because I just wanted to. And I'm like, all right, I'm going up the strand and I stop and you, you can't miss it. There's this huge, the uh, Royal Courts of Justice, black or uh, white with gray tops. And I stop in there and I come out and I'm like, all right. And I'm looking around, I'm like, Twinings has gotta be here somewhere. And I look at, and it's a big building. And then there's Twinings. And it's right, you come out of the oh Courts of Justice and it's right across the street from you. And um, it's a very narrow building and they'll do tea tastings too. They have um, a oh. lovely, Huge selection of tea, really, really good. So, That's cool. go, so back, go back. Go, go okay. To, buy me some tea. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right, you ready for number three? Yes. All so right. the Earl Grey cream, which you're used to, but I don't drink that often. So I'm curious what it's like for you know in comparison with Moonlight. So, hmm. is it creamier? Yeah, I think it's creamier and not as sweet, right? Great. Mm -hmm. It's not as sweet, but there is a creamier quality to it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what they put in it to make it creamy. Mm -hmm. I always, people say, so there's cream in it? I'm like, no, it's kind of like cream soda. I love cream soda. 
there's no cream in cream soda. It's oh, the, yeah. about the vanilla adds a cream in it too. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. I've never even thought about cream soda before. So I like, and I had it's the American version. I don't. I'm, I know. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, I'm gonna have to say, I'm enjoying every last one of these. Mm -hmm. For not for somebody who doesn't typically drink Earl Grey on a regular basis. Not the queen's favorite, doesn't she like all right? Sorry, queen. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, she'll forgive you. <laughs> She's watching, isn't she? Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's right there over your shoulder. I know. That's why I looked over my shoulder. I was like, she'll forgive you. It's okay. <laughs> You're her advocate. Huh? Absolutely. So if you had to pick one. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So if I have to pick one, it's between the Bravo and the Moonlight. And I'm still deciding. Hmm. It's a good thing we're not sampling whiskey. <laughs> I'd be under the table by now. Maybe we should be. <laughs> it's like maybe that should be our next tasting. <laughs> we can do it in teacups. <laughs> uh, so the company from which I bought these samples mm -hmm. does provide a black whiskey tea called Kentucky Bourbon Tea. Really? Yes. So, is it, so what, is there any alcohol content in it by the time you steep it? I don't know. I don't know how, it, it may be in the process of the drying of the leaves. That maybe mm -hmm. there's some, um, um, soak them in bourbon first. <laughs> some sort of infusion or is it maybe within the wood chips that they use to smoke? I haven't a clue. I'm, yeah. I'm talking out of, I'm just, <laughs> But I have to say the Bravo has really surprised me. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan. This is closest to a regular Earl Grey, but mm -hmm. and I'm really surprised by I, that. I agree. And I like Earl regular Earl Grey, but I think this is better. I'd say so if I had to pick a tea for like just a go to tea, like every day, I'd do Bravo. And then when I want something a little sweeter, I would go with Moonlight. Moonlight. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. if I can throw in mm -hmm. uh, Add milk or cream to either one of these, and it elevates it. Oh yeah, that's. Sh I'm sure it would. I should have had my little milk thing ready. <laughs> oh wait. Do you want to do? <laughs> Go for it. If you want, if you want to add just to try it. Okay. All right. Is, I would not add lemon to this. I think it's already both. Oh, no. Yeah. And if you did, and those of you who don't know, I'm just saying, just in case, if you add lemon, you don't add cream to it or milk. Oh so. yeah, that sounds gross. <laughs> One word audience is called curdle. And you don't want curdles. That's a big tea can faux pas. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Are you still there? I'm almost back. Okay, because this just my phone just kicked me out from my video and I'm trying to figure oh, out. No. <laughs> How do we do this? I can see you. <laughs> you can see, that's fabulous. I'm so glad. Um, <laughs> but you can't see. <laughs> let's see. No, I can't. Bear with me, audience. I don't know what has happened. Uh -huh. um, can you still hear me? Yep, I can hear and see you. I don't know why it's not showing me. This is how virtual teas go. <laughs> you have to have at least one technical difficulty. <laughs> well, I'm glad we're having this one. Does anybody know how to get me back in here? Doggone it. <laughs> is that because are you on a laptop, right? I am on a laptop. And if you like go along the icons at the bottom. Okay. I'm back. Okay, <laughs> hey, great. My Welcome apologies. back. My apologies. Okay. All right. So I, I have to show off my little creamer. Look, it's a cat. <laughs> so cute. And it looks ridiculous. Okay, now you have to watch the milk come out. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> Sorry. I love this cat. I got it like several years ago and it's my favorite. <laughs> but but it's a special use one because I don't want it to break. <laughs> So no one ever saw that at my tea parties. <laughs> That's for at home only. <laughs> it's for you. 
I know. It's like, Jose's like, are you going to use this? Jose's my husband, those who don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> for your tea parties? Absolutely not. No. These are for my special and particular use. That's right. Yeah. So I added milk to all three. So now I'm retasting all of them. I don't know what you think. So the Earl Grey cream almost makes it taste like, um, like if you get like a French vanilla, like hot chocolate or something. Mm -hmm. Let's give it, yeah. And then let's see. The Bravo is still good. I don't think it necessarily needs milk though. Like I now agree. that I've added it. Mm -hmm. I and I wonder if it, because it has the extra, did you say you added milk to it? Yes, mm -hmm. okay. I did all three just to see. So there's not enough citrus to make it bubble up or anything, correct? Oh no, uh -uh. it's not bubbling up. <laughs> Wouldn't want that to happen. No. Well, um, like I said, I, I did a thing, um, one of my tea tastings that I did, and I had um, a regular Ceylon tea, and I had, what was the second tea? was um, China Orange Pico. And the third tea was the creme de la Earl Grey. And I made everybody wait for that one. That was number three tea again. But two, two of my participants were standing and going, <laughs> was very good. Just waiting for it. <laughs> and, um, and that was, of course, hands down, that was a favorite, was the creme de la Earl Grey. And mm -hmm. uh, as I said, it, it's been called the uh, tea, of, tea of the aristocracy. I think it's something really quite special. I um, love that. Did and, you? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> when since we were calling each other, uh, lady, a Virginia lady of Orlando earlier, um, have you heard that there's some way that you can uh, buy like basically a foot, a square foot of land in Scotland, and by their rules, you will be a lord or lady? There's a company that's now selling them, which I feel like it's like how the people sell the stars or whatever, like you exactly. name a star after someone. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I heard about it. It was being advertised on one of my podcasts. It was like, what? I don't know how much it is, but I'm like, pretty sure uh, that's happening for Christmas. <laughs> I'll be a lady soon. <laughs> how can they legally do they with that? I mean, I would, don't you have to have the blessing of the queen or something like that? I, well, I guess in whatever the old rules are in Scotland is apparently if you are a land owner, you are a lord lady yeah lord or lady so i'm sure they explain it better on the website my information is from a commercial how much is like a square foot of how much is it uh, yeah it's just like a square like you know foot by foot like i guess i'm guessing somebody has land and they're just piecing it up a foot at a time so that everybody can pay them to be lords and ladies right right <laughs> I don't, I, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming we would not be recognized, you know, in the palace as such. I was going to say, does it get you into Westminster Palace? Can you go in and, you know. <laughs> yeah, prob probably, yeah, probably doesn't get you into anywhere. <laughs> but you'll get a little certificate <laughs> that you can put in your house. <laughs> get a certificate. Oh my gosh, that is hilarious. Well, and then I, you saw, I sent that, um, I think it was through Instagram somewhere that I sent you, you can get your picture paints of like royalty and that keeps popping up in my instagram it's, it's yes i love that Elizabeth. i think that is hilarious it's so cute yeah i started following him after you sent that to me because that's right. so cool <laughs> yeah, it is though no, um right. I, I can just see now me getting a big 16 by 20 and having that done and, <laughs> and every day you must pay homage that's it. Well, once you get the painting done and you have your, you know, your official ladyship, you get one of those little gold plaque things that go at the bottom of the painting. <laughs> yeah, lady, lady, lady of the Amy. Yes. <laughs> but I wonder, I think you get, I wonder if you get to go, I think you get to go in and pick actually kind of like what setting, like they have everything painted up to the face. Right. You can go in and pick which one you want. So, you know, you could be anywhere from, you know, Mary Queen of Scots to, uh, I don't know, Queen Elizabeth. I don't know. Yeah. 
That's yeah. I, say, I think I saw some that looked like Queen Elizabeth and some of her probably like earlier coronation photo type things. Yeah, or mm -hmm. portraits. <laughs> but yeah, I'd probably want to do that or Victoria. I yeah. figured Victoria, and, and I'm going to come back to that because I'm watching something now, which is just fascinating. Um, <laughs> uh, do you like eggnog? I have barely ever tried it, so I'll just say uh, when I first tried it, I. I didn't love it, <laughs> but it didn't, it wasn't gross either. <laughs> okay. well, for those who do like eggnog, so I, have a, I have a son who's a massive sugar bug. I call him my yellow jacket, and I always say, for sugar, he, he's hovering. That's hilarious. <laughs> but uh, about two years ago, I said, would you like some tea? He said, sure. And it's never, it's, and it's never sweet enough for him, ever. Mm -hmm. It is never sweet enough for him. But um, we, he, he splashed some eggnog into the creme de la Earl Grey. Is that your captain? Right. Yeah, that's captain. <laughs> Sorry. That's <wrong>. that's <laughs> <laughs> but he splashed some eggnog into the creme de la Earl Grey. Oh my gosh, it was out. It was amazing. It was oh my gosh. So, so now every Christmas, around every Christmas time, because I do buy eggnog for, for the kids and stuff and to enjoy in small amounts, um, but uh, <laughs> not alcohol. Then just not alcoholic. It's not that one. It's the plain one that you can get the dairy section. Um, but we, we <laughs> splash that into the creme de la Earl Grey and it really, it's very, very good. It adds even, I mean, just, it's just beyond the second. So I'm, yeah, I might be okay with it if it's mixed in tea. Cause I think part of the issue for me was that it's so like thick to be drinking. Very thick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So I like the idea of it in tea. I'll do yeah. that. <laughs> very good. So right now on our PBS station, which should be your PBS, um, everybody's PBS, there is, um, how the Victorians built England. And oh. last night was um, the uh, second installment. It actually aired in England back in uh, 2018. Mm -hmm. um, but the first installment talked about how the Victorians uh, in England, actually, not just Victorians around the world, but uh, mm -hmm. the Victorians actually built the subway system, the trolley system, mass transportation, uh, yeah. they about how the underground was built, how it got the name Tube, everything. Mm -hmm. and it was amazing. Um, I've just barely started installment two, and it talks about the, um, when I say health system, I'm not talking like Medicare or insurance. Um, what I'm talking about is how back in the Victorian age, how cholera and the dysentery and the, just the sanitation was just, yeah. there, there was nothing for it. And they mm -hmm. highlight these men who actually came up with the systems for drainage and, uh, and, and everything else. And it's, it's amazing. It's just, I love these documentaries because you learn mm -hmm. so much about history. Um, but uh, if, if you can catch, I think you can go on PBS and you can actually go back and watch the first two installments. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'll have to look because I don't have regular TV stations, but I think usually PBS things end up coming on Amazon Prime. Like that's how I watch Victoria. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You just have to wait a bit. But Where's Victoria, where has that been? I don't know, but I, I was going to say what you were saying when you started talking about plumbing made sense, and then, or I mean, sounded familiar, and then I was like, oh yeah, wasn't that part of in Victoria when uh, her husband is like kind of talking to these, you know, new age people? Right. <laughs> They're talking about plumbing. <laughs> yes, and when they when they show her get. He's, he rides a train. Don't they ride a train together? And if I'm not mistaken, it's the very train that they highlight. It's called, oh my gosh, what's it called? Um, now I can't remember. It's an M. Oh, Metropolitan One. Metropolitan One. It was, and it was the first train that would take oh. from un, up, upper ground into underground. And I knew my house phone would ring. Oh wow! I knew it would ring. It's spam. It's always. <laughs> But uh, yeah, and I'm like, I'll bet you anything that's the same train that they used in the in the series because um, it it, it, oh, it awesome. shows how Victorian is on the inside and everything. So um, I did look right. up. I think it's supposed to return February, March, something like that. Okay, they halted production. Well, it'll be even longer. It'll be even longer for me. <laughs> I'm waiting for it to get down this. Time. <laughs> but that's a right. <laughs> this is yeah. the life. <laughs> yeah, but I do understand they're coming out with Downton Abbey movie two, a sequel to the, a sequel or a prequel, because I oh. understand too it might take place in New York about oh, the that's awesome. Victoria and Robert met. Oh, that'd be cool. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, is there, let's see, I think, are there two more seasons of The Crown left? 
one. I think <clears throat> one. Okay, I thought that they said that they're gonna they were gonna do two more. No, oh, one. I thought this was supposed to be the last one. I know they've chosen their actress to play Princess Diana. Mm. Um, okay, well I guess we'll see. <laughs> we at least get one. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a good series. It's intriguing. Although I just I, it's so much hearsay. Nobody was party to those conversations. I know. <laughs> But it's interesting. So yeah. it was Tisdale, the uh, granddaughter to Queen Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I had read. So she was watching it. She watched season one, and she said, "Granny, Granny, you got to watch this." And I oh think they were not. They were none too pleased. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they were that's terribly happy with that. <laughs> That's and Prince, Prince William met uh, the actress who plays, oh, I can't think of her name right now. I'm seeing her face. The one who plays the current queen, the older version of Queen Elizabeth. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, yeah I forget her name. At some function. And he says, oh, yeah, I know who you are. <laughs> like, that, that's her, her retelling. She says, oh, I, I know who you are. And didn't, she said, I don't think he was too pleased to have met me. Oh, and, my goodness. Uh, yeah. So, um, uh, yeah. Have you watched the... Um, the Windsors, by chance, it's the parody of the royal family that I'm always talking about. It's yeah. not one that you can probably watch with kids around. <laughs> no, it wasn't. No. Yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> but, it's not two or three episodes, and I forgot to go back to that. Then life kind of picked up again, and I, I haven't gone back to that. Right. So. It's, it's pretty, it's so fun. I watched them pretty much all again when my mom was visiting in town because I wanted to show her, and I thought, Maybe she'll, like, like, she knows, she watches a lot of British shows. She's not obsessed with the royal family like I am. But if you know just the basics, you'll get, you know, the jokes of the characters. And um, what I love is that, so Harry, they make, like, a complete idiot. And, <laughs> and so when he's talking to William about, for whatever reason, they're talking about, like, abdicating and, uh, Harry says something about like you know great uncle uh, Edward or whatever and and William's like Harry how do you know that and he's like I watched the crown <laughs> <laughs> that's a great reference I have to say though in that series they don't do Prince William any favors either oh no they don't he yeah he's like an idiot but he's like you know with a the best of intentions. Like Harry never has any intentions. <laughs> Just kind of bumbling around. Very funny. Yes. So my, my neighbor across the street, like mm -hmm. literally, we, we share part yard here. Um, hi, Lil. I wish she would watch. She would love it. Um, she's my biggest fan. Um, oh. <laughs> she's so sweet. Uh, Lil um, has just, she got the book, and she's probably the first in line for, uh, what is it, the, um, the uh, Harry and Meghan book. Oh, yes, yes. Um, I, my, one of my, yeah, the British podcast I listen to has been talking about it like a bunch, and now I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> Me neither, but she breathed through it in about three days, she said. And, wow. Uh, so she said that she would lend it to me. So um, oh, awesome. We'll, we'll see. I might, I might do that. I'm like, who doesn't yeah. really want to read that? I don't know. I'm so yeah. much more of a traditionalist. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'm still not sure if Harry made, I'm not going to say he made the right decision because if this is a woman he loves, absolutely. But sometimes I'm like, you should have stayed in England. Um, <laughs> but um, I, 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 I don't know. It's like, one of those, cause I think when you do anything like that, there you take it with a grain of salt because if they've approved it, then it's only going to give the best version of themselves. Like any one of us would do. I would be like, right. oh, oh yeah, right. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. And I think, um, yeah. So I am fine with their decision and with the, you know, them as a couple, whatever. My only issue is like when baby Archie grows up and then he's like, what? <laughs> like, why did you make me leave? <laughs> like, I could be living in a palace right now. Like, what is this? <laughs> and then, and you know what they're going to say? But we bought you a square foot of land in Scotland, honey. <laughs> <laughs> so you're still a lord. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I know, because he'll have his cousins, right? Like cousins like Charlotte and George and Louie, and they'll be living it up <laughs> and doing royal duties, you know, working. And Archie will just, like, be this American hanging out. <laughs> I know. You got to wonder. You got to wonder. 
Um, I might flub this, but I'm going to try to get this right. There was a phenomenal um, documentary, and it was um, hosted by Elizabeth McGovern, who plays Lady Cora in Downton Abbey. Mm -hmm. And she went back and she talked about, if you trace the, the history back through Diana, mm -hmm. is it her great, is it great somebody, great grandfather, great something like that, for that, I told you I'm going to get this wrong. I <laughs> if I knew I was going to bring this up, I should have looked it up. Uh, <laughs> but basically that he was displeased with something in England. He was very upset and he forbade his children, his sons, I think it was, mm -hmm. to, um, to return to England and or to associate with anybody. And it was one of them that ended up marrying the um, uh, Althorps mm -hmm. in his lineage. Yeah. Had he not, for, I mean, didn't matter if he forbade it or not, it happened anyway. Right, There's right. Said, I do not want this to happen. You will not go back to England. I don't want you to have anything to do with the aristocracy over oh there. My gosh. And it's his great, great, I'm pretty, I'm going to say this right. Great, great, great grandson. That's who, a, who's um, now, you know, how many second in line to the throne. Right. Or something like that. It's pretty fast. I'm going to have to check that out. I'm going to email it to you. I'm going to find that. Because it's, yeah, it's, yeah. oh my gosh. And the picture they showed of him or one of his sons was like, oh my gosh, that looks like William. <laughs> it, it's that amazing. If I can find that, I'm going to send you a link to that because it was really, really interesting. I'm sorry, people who are watching out there, I don't have the actual accurate information, That's but it's really, really interesting. Look up the... Uh, the yeah, every, everyone has Google. <laughs> I know, exactly. <laughs> you can find it. Sure. Yeah, so I'm just saying the Earl Grey cream has grown on me because I did another sugar I think it just took two sugars. Like the other ones took one. For me, my taste, <laughs> it took two. Okay. Well, I have enjoyed all of them. I really mm -hmm. have. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I'm used to the creme de l'eau gray. I do that on special occasions. It's not something I crave daily, but you know, when I'm looking for something, a nice pick me up in the afternoon, trying to avoid eating, you know, a couple pounds of chocolate, then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Hey, I finally found McVitie's Digestives. Oh. Our commissary finally started. When I say commissary, that's our military commissary, the Army they Post. They carry chocolate digestives? Yeah. Really? Yes. yes. They finally that's started awesome. carrying them. Do you know how much they are, by chance? I think I paid, I could go back and get my receipt. Um, <laughs> I would say it was like three forty nine. It was under five bucks. Oh. Oh, that's not bad. Okay. I thought they would like charge you an arm and a leg for it. <laughs> and I don't pay tax on it. Oh boy. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got a very nice digestive hookup. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what the conversation always is to those who don't know, right? My husband's like, what is that? Yes. It sounds it's very strange. Honey, it's a chocolate laxative. <laughs> <laughs> so why would anybody name anything like that? No. It is bizarre. It, it is bizarre. You know how those Europeans are. I said it's right up there with clotted cream. Americans cannot get their head around clotted because the only but, time we ever use the word clot. Right. And it. and even like lemon curd, like that one usually. <laughs> curdle, curdle. Have you and I had that discussion? Do you like lemon curd? I've got a friend who loves. Yeah. Did you hear me? I do love. Yeah, I do love lemon curd. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Yeah, do you? I, I don't hate it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, it's, if I have a choice between that and strawberry jam or raspberry jam, mm -hmm. I'm going to go for the jam more than I am going to go for the Okay. Person. But I do have a friend, um, hi Bethany, uh, she <laughs> has it, it comes, she does one of those things on Amazon where it automatically reorders. Oh everything. yes, the subscribe and save, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Love it. So she, okay, well she loves it more than I do, <laughs> but that's... <laughs> And I have a, a thing, a recipe in one of my Downton Abbey tea, in my Downton Abbey tea book, and it, it mm -hmm. shows how to make um, lemon curd tarts. They look amazing. So I, I think yeah. it's going to be one of those, and I'm going to try one of these days. Well, so, so I have a, I don't know if you've seen at World Market, the brand of scones that they carry called Sticky Fingers. Mm -hmm. Have you seen all those with the, the different flavors? Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> so those, I have to say, they never they're never going to be the shape of like a traditional scone. No. Yeah. 
but they taste so good. All, all the flavors, but the lemon poppy seed with lemon curd is amazing. Oh, I'll bet. Yeah. And they're so easy to make because literally you add water and that's it. And that's it. That's I've literally. done them before and um, I did the, I think it was a white chocolate raspberry I have done. Oh, nice. But the lemon, I actually made like a light lemon frosting, like a drizzle. And Ooh, it too. that sounds good. It was very good. It was mm -hmm. very good. You need to come for tea. I know. <laughs> already here <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness well i hope you enjoyed this i have yeah and now i'm gonna be like ready to go i've got <laughs> three cups of tea <laughs> <laughs> told my husband the last time i did this i said i am so over caffeinated i gotta take a sleeping pill tonight and i love it yeah gonna be hyped up get yeah get some tea shipments out, <laughs> out the door. i think i'll be able to speed through making dinner tonight <gasps> Singing and floating on air while I do That's it. That's great. <laughs> um, so this was one of the packages that I had wanted to put together. It was a, a variation of the um, Old Grey Teas for virtual tea tastings or virtual tea parties that um, I hate to say, unfortunately, didn't really take off unless anybody's out there. The box right. I sent you, it does come with um, the sugar, the three yes. boxes of tea, um, a little tea bag rest, and yes. um, Cute adorable. little cups and stuff. They're cute. Aren't they adorable? They're so adorable. I know. I was like, they're too cute to, yeah, to use, but yeah. I'm probably going to let Piper play with them. She'll love them. Very good. And I was going to say, they're perfect for kids' tea parties, especially, because you don't want to pull out that good china for that. That's true. Yeah, yeah. for the average kid, I let <laughs> Piper play with them. Or anybody else you know that's just a clumsy Butterfingers. Right. Um, <laughs> Um, one of the other packages, I was calling it the provinces, um, for the areas that used to be owned by, uh, by England was, um, Sri Lanka for Ceylon tea, because Sri Lanka used to be called Ceylon, um, China black, the orange pico and, um, the Kenyan tea, the China black and the Kenyan tea are, I, I those are my go-tos in the morning now. I will not, really? I, I hardly ever drink English breakfast tea anymore. Those two are my absolute favorite. Just a wow. really good, potent black tea. Mm -hmm. Um, what was the other one? I wanted to call it um, uh, the Westminster package. And oh. that, um, I was going to have, um, no, it was Kensington. I'm sorry. Um, and had different teas. So I can do varieties like that. I know you have, you know, certain staples that you do. And I would love to sample some. Some of you sent me, yes. whatever, but if you are yes. willing I mean, yeah. And, and we can pull other people in on it too. You know, it can be, I know you've got your calling all tea timers group. Oh yeah. Yeah. That would be fun. I know. <laughs> yeah. Cause I would say, yeah, I can definitely send you some because I like that you pick teas that are um, like traditional, but also like just a little, like, you know, a little twist on tradition. And then, whereas I pick all teas that are like specially flavored. <laughs> so I don't have like any <laughs> normal teas, like the Buckingham Garden Party, Buckingham Palace Garden Party is probably the closest to regular because it's close to an Earl Grey. Right. But everything else uh, is special. So like I told you, I have the Swiss hot chocolate black tea now. And I got a holiday spice in, you know, because it's the holidays. Yes. <laughs> so, um, and I got some other cool ones. There's some like cherry rose festival green tea. Yes. <laughs> so maybe we'll have to try some of those. Yeah. Well, let me know. It is good to see you. I always enjoy my time yes. with you. You're always so busy. It's hard to catch you even in a text message. Um, <laughs> I wonder where she is. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Why are you apologizing? You're a big fan. I know. I, go. <laughs> I, know. Okay. I love it. Well, thank you so much for inviting me to do this. Yeah. Oh, no, it was my pleasure for sure. And I hope we can do it again sometime, maybe with the, with the, yes. okay. so this is my, my little thing here. I yes, I love it. TR, or not TR, what am I saying? I need a new fascinator, but that is a first world problem right there. <laughs> I need a new fascinator. Yes, that's true. When I texted you earlier and said, I'm not really in a fascinator mood today, like surprisingly, it's because I'm tired of the fascinators I have. And I've got, I mean, I've got enough, but because I was just trying to have one of every color. Right. But now I'm bored of those. <laughs> so, I think that's a business expense, though. <laughs> well, I am less than five weeks away from turning 50. And um, 
I'm ready for my close up, Mr. DeMille. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, and I, my mom, I know she's going to say, what do you want? I'll send you a check. And, oh. uh, and I have a few things that, um, she would probably love to buy me. So maybe the next time we do this, maybe I'll be wearing something pink or green or something. Awesome. Thing. Yeah. Um, and maybe you'll be a lady. Maybe you can tell your mom about that. <laughs> I have a big portrait of myself looking like, you know, Mary Queen of Scots or something. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, I tell you what, if that tiny plot of land also came with an airplane ticket so I could go and put my two tiny feet in that square. I know, I know. I was like, it's such a funny thing to be like, yeah, I own <laughs> a spot of land <laughs> that I can't do anything with. Nobody would ever question you if you just say, yes, I own some land in Scotland. You're like, That's true. That? <laughs> a whole square foot. <laughs> uh, some odd square footage. Some, some odd yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I love That's it. That's amazing. Love it. Oh, my goodness. Well, I hope we can do this again maybe in a month. <laughs> Otherwise, I will see you on Calling All Tea Timers this Friday. Cross my fingers. My daughter can stand. Yeah, I'll, language I'll language cross them for you. Language. Yes. Definitely. All right. Great to see you. Cheers. Right, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>